What's going on guys? Uh, before we get started uh, with quantifiers with groups, I actually want to show you how to apply names to groups. In the last video, we were introduced to groups and we were accessing groups by numbers. Remember, groups are captured from left to right and we were using numbers to represent each group starting from one. And uh, group zero just rep represented the entire match that our regular expression or um, pattern found us. All right, so let's get started with uh, groups. So the first thing we're going to do is import regular expressions. So I import that, and now we have the string. So I'm just going to run this, and um, the string is just uh, an address. So we have a city, a state, and a zip code. And the whole point of the string, uh, what we want to do with the string is we actually want to divide it up into three different groups. So we're going to have one group as city, one group as state, and one group holding the zip code. I've already prepared uh, the regular expressions used to pull out each of these three groups. So the first one is uh, going to be pulling out the city, the second one will pull out the state, and the third one will pull out the uh, zip code. And I've already gone through how to create some of these uh, regular expressions or what these square brackets and this plus and all of this information means. So if you guys don't know uh, what these regular expressions stand for, I suggest you take a look at some of my earlier videos on regular expressions. Okay, with that said, uh, let's move on. I'm just going to save everything. I'm going to save this regular expression to a uh, match. So we have already.search and we, uh, if you look closely, three different groups. So we have one group followed by a comma, so it's going to pull out New York, followed by a comma. Second group, which is going to be the New York and the third group, which is going to be the zip code. So city, state, zip code. So I'm going to save this to a match variable. So let me just run this. And now we have um, three different groups. So I'm just going to run this. Uh, group one, group two, group three, and of course, group zero. So group zero is really not a group. It's just, uh, it pulls out the entire match. So if I run this, um, we have group, uh, zero, uh, group one, group two, group three, and the entire match. So we're using uh, numbers to, to represent the groups. So the first group is representing the city, the second group is representing the state, and the third group is representing the zip code. Now, if you have about 20 different groups, it might be difficult or problematic to, to memorize all these sort of correlations or the uh, links between group numbers and groups. So group names are, were introduced so it's a little easier to pull out the information you want. So if you have a huge regular expression pulling out tons of information, you can use groups to uh, sort of organize your information or um, pull out the uh, type of information you want. So you, I'm sorry, you can use uh, naming of groups to make it easier to pull out the information that you want. So let's just uh, get started with some of the syntax involved around how you can name a group. Now this syntax can be uh, overwhelming, but it's not that bad if you get used to it. So the first thing I want to go over this question mark and P. To name a group, we have to use a question mark P followed by two brackets, and we're going to actually put the name within these brackets. So the syntax is just a question mark P followed by two brackets, and then we put the name within those two brackets. So here, our name for this group is city, our name for the other group is state, and the uh, name for the third group is zip code. So all we're doing is question mark P and the two brackets, and we put the name in between. Now we're going to uh, combine this with the regular expression, and I'm going to show you guys, here we go, uh, the full uh, syntax to name a regular expression, or name a group. So here, uh, I want you guys to pay attention to this portion. So we put everything within two brackets. Remember, um, the two brackets represent a group. Now, this is the regular expression, right? Uh, the regular expression that's going to represent the group. So we prepend that with the name of the group. So question mark P, open bracket, city, close bracket. So we prepend the uh, regular expression with the, uh, the name. So, and they're all enclosed within the two brackets. So all we're doing is we have the two brackets, regular expression, right? All we did was we prepended the uh, regular expression with the name associated with the regular expression. So here the first group is city, the second group is uh, state, and the third group is zip code. So it's actually not that bad. All right, so the other thing I wanted to go over is this re.compile. Um, we haven't actually used re.compile yet, and you really don't need to use re.compile. Um, re.compile actually has a couple of methods that you can use, but 
for the most part, you don't really need to use uh, those methods, or I haven't really found the need um, to use any of those methods. But aria.compile is just a, a way to save your pattern. Um, so this is the pattern that we're going to use as our regular expression. So it, it's, a, it's just a clean way to save your pattern just in case you're going to use your pattern over and over and over again. In my case, I didn't want to copy this whole thing or I didn't want to type this whole thing out here because it would just make, it would just make the code look a little um, unorganized or hard to read. But, uh, so that's why I use aria.compile. But, but you don't have to use aria.compile in this case. You can actually just save this string. So if I, if I would have just saved this string as a pattern and got rid of this aria.compile, I could have still put this pattern in here and it still would have um, ran successfully or ran co correctly without any bugs. But as I said earlier, um, aria.compile has a couple of methods, a um, couple of benefits that I might go into another video. And also it's just widely used within the community. So if you read a lot of code regarding, if you want to read it actually, if you want to read code regarding uh, regular expressions, then you'll see this aria.compile used a lot. And that's why I thought it was beneficial for me to introduce you to uh, aria.compile. So all we're doing is just saving the regular expression pattern to a variable so that instead of typing out the whole pattern, we can just use the variable name, in this case, pattern. So let me just, uh, yeah, so let me run this pattern. Okay, so now we have our pattern and now I'm just gonna plug that pattern in here and we have our original string, which you guys remember is just this New York, New York 11369. Okay, so, and we're going to save this to a variable match. So we've done this uh, numerous times, so this should, uh, you know, sh should be no problem for you guys. So match.group, now, before we were using numbers, right, to uh, pull out the different groups. So if you wanted to plot group one, we're using uh, match.group one. If you wanted to plot group two, we were using uh, match.group two. Now, since we've named each group, we could actually pull out each group by their uh, respective name. So, so the first one is uh, city, second one is state, and third one is zip. So let me just run this, and we get New York, New York, 11369. So essentially, instead of using numbers, we're using names, and this is um, probably a lot easier to pull out the groups you want. Instead of having to memorize, okay, so group zero was city, you could just memorize city. I feel like city is a, a lot more readable, and it's just a lot easier to memorize. But even if you had uh, applied names to these groups, you can still revert to the old methods of using numbers. In this case, uh, city was represented, or um, group one was represented by the name city, but it's also represented by um, the number one. So if you want to revert back to the old ways, in this case, you have flexibility, and you can actually use group dot one. Uh, um, uh, group, you can actually use the, the integer one to pull out the first group. Yeah, so that's pretty much the gist of names. Now there's a couple of more things I want to talk to you regarding names. And the first thing is, uh, what if you forget the names, right? So let me just uh, run this, match.groups, right? So say we had like 30 groups and you forgot the names or, and you forgot the numbers, what each group represents or what name, right? what each name represents and you forgot the names. Let's just say you forgot the names. So, what is New York supposed to represent? What is this 11369? So say you forgot what these uh, these uh, strings mean or these uh, groups mean. So just in case you forgot the names of the groups, you have this method called uh, group dick. So this group dick, I think, only works when you have named your groups. So if you run this match dot group dick, it actually gives you a nice clean dictionary. So you have city, which is the name of the first group uh, representing New York. Uh, the state representing, which is the name of the second group representing New York, or has a value New York, and the third uh, zip code representing uh, 11369. So just in case, so if you run match.groups and you're like, okay, I have all these groups, I forgot what, what I was pulling out or what each of these um, items within the tuple mean, you have this nice clean uh, method called match.groupdig. Yeah, so hopefully that was beneficial, and that's pretty much the gist of using names with your groups.